Greetings to everyone. My name is uh, Ngingeran Somtanyu, and I very much appreciate each and every one of you for joining this uh, webinar, which has been organized by the Global Youth Network Platform for Education and Empowerment. And today we're here to talk about the effects of climate change on us humans and the environment. To begin with, I'm going to start with a quotation from the United Nations which says that climate change is the defining issue of our time and we are at a defining moment. From shifting weather patterns that affect or threaten food production to rising sea levels that increase the risks of catastrophic flooding, the impacts of climate change are both global in scope and unprecedented in scale. Today, we're happy to host our brother, that is uh, Mustafa Domboya from the Gambia, to talk to us about the effects of climate change on us humans and the environment. Let me first of all give you a short uh, profile of Domboya. Uh, Domboya is a holder of a diploma and an advanced diploma in community development. He is currently a third year student at the University of the Gambia majoring in development studies and minoring in environmental sciences. Dumboya is not only a youth advocate, but at the same time, he's a trained forestry ranger too with the Ministry of Forestry and Environment. And he has three years of work experience with the forestry department in the Gambia. He's also had the opportunity to work with the Agency for Development of Women and Children in the Global Fund Project and Sustainable Food Security and Environmental Governance Project in the Gambia, Senegal, and Guinea-Bissau. And he has also worked as a community development consultant with Africa Water Enterprises and eWater Africa. He's currently the managing director, a co-founder, as well as a shareholder for eWater Pay in the Gambia. Let me take this opportunity once again to welcome each and every one of you for honoring our invitation and particularly Dumboya for accepting to come on board to share his word of knowledge and experience in this field, especially on issues regarding the effects of climate change on us and the environment. That said, I'm going to give the, the opportunity now to Dumboya to do his presentation. I think that is going to take approximately 30 minutes after which we're going to move to the question and answer session. Over to you, Dumboya. Thank you so much for that brilliant presentation, uh, introduction. Um, I don't want people to be puzzled by the uh, introduction anyway. That's, those are written on papers, and I hope that I'm going to have a very participatory session with all of you. I will thank all of you for joining this session uh, to empower each other and to support each other in, in a global cause. Uh, <clears throat> Getting into the, in, uh, to the presentation proper, what we must all understand about uh, climate change, uh, these are the changes in pattern of uh, how the world uh, interact with the ecosystem and the effect and the consequences of these interactions. The effects of these interactions on both human beings, animals, and the environment. This is the way climate change comes in, in order to, uh, this is how climate change uh, in a broader perspective could be defined. But however, <clears throat> there are a definition of climate change from a broader perspective as proponents have also uh, put it across. Um, what, what I want this presentation to be is to define a, a roadmap for all of us, one, and also to confine ourselves within a presentation proper uh, so that we can better use the time, time judiciously and so that we can also confine ourselves within the, uh, we can also confine ourselves within the, uh, within the presentation. Uh, this is how I, I put it. But however, I would love this presentation uh, not to be on only my side, but to get support from each and every one of you, as I expect all of you uh, experts in your own areas. I'm also trying to do my, uh, my, my level best. So I would love you to get me into the uh, learning outcomes of this presentation first. Okay, yes. So by the end of this learning, uh, this presentation, uh, I would love each and, all, each, and, uh, each and all of us, uh, inc myself inclusive as a learner, to come with a to understand the different, uh, 
um, this is, this is, so understand and differentiate between climate change and climate impacts. And also how to, uh, how, uh, to explain how climate impacts are designed and analyze how impacts of climate change combine with other impacts to the environment, to us human beings and the environment. Also, climate change evidences, consequences, and sectoral impacts as well. And also to explain what impacts and pathways and how, uh, and how to design and evaluate them appropriately as well. Because if you look at the climate change, <coughs> you must understand the effects of climate change and what climate change is and the impacts of climate change. We also need to understand from a broader perspective, the climate impacts on each of the sector of the economy, either, uh, yeah, of the economy. We also need to understand this. The, 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 the effects of climate change on the economy, the effect of climate change on the natural environment, and the effect of climate change socially that we all need to understand. So we will support each other to come into these uh, to, uh, conclusions. So we also need to understand uh, the evidence of climate change. People must see the evidence, how climate change happens, how, how, uh, how, can, how to make people understand and believe in climate change. Well, climate change is a slow, it, it is a move, it's moving in a slow motion. To an extent that you think climate change is not a reality, when climate change is real and it is happening in our time. And also explain the impacts and pathways, how, how, how can we come together to evaluate the problems of climate change uh, and also the possibilities of mitigating climate change and also putting solutions to climate change and make, uh, and make it more res and make ourselves more resilient and adaptable to the consequences of climate change. Because climate change is a life threatening, uh, it's a life threatening challenges. And there is no challenge today in the world. There is no problem to today in the world that is more integral than climate change. In fact, climate change, the effect of climate change is now, uh, is now, is now if affecting every cranny and corner of human life or human livelihood. Um, you can go to the next slide. Okay. So if you look at the if you look at this slide here, there are many listings and illustrations of climate change here. Um, if people if people if because I will tell you, humanity is in collision. Human uh, pursuance of economic growth human pursuance of making life and livelihood better for him is, 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 in a, is in a collusion point with the ecosystem. So human beings are going beyond the planetary boundaries to an extent that we are threatening our own existence in the universe. This is what brought all this in discussion at, uh, at the UNF, uh, United Nations Framework and Convention on, uh, on Climate Change in 1977 in Rio uh, 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 de Janeiro, and also in Stockholm, and in many other parts of the world. But humanity, humanity and human pursuance for economic growth from, 19, uh, from 1750 to today is in a great collision with, uh, with, the, with, the finite, uh, uh, with the finite art that we are living in today. And that the effect of our, our interaction with the natural environment, the effect of our uh, interaction with the trees, plants, animals, soil, river, ozone, fish, um, seabed, and everything, it is affecting our own existence. Because if, if you look at the Amazon, uh, if you look at the, 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 the forest of Amazon, so people are over harvesting to an extent that we are making vulnerable ourselves we are making ourselves vulnerable to the to the impacts of climate change go one rise in the sea level will uh, uh, most of the big cities in the world like the you know, uh, like the uh, new york uh, dubai um, uh, mexico most of these cities in the world are going to sink just one rise one meter rise of the sea level and the more we over harvest our uh, our forest the more we over intrude into the uh, into the natural environment, is the more we are getting into these points. This is why it is also this it is also having impacts on the on the on the uh, pattern uh, and the volume and the rate of rainfall in most part of the world today. Today, you ask most of the farmers who are not relying on the modern technology, will tell you that 40 years ago, this is the amount of uh, harvest or torn I can get from this specific. Plot of land 
or this uh, 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 this hectare, number of two hectare or three hectare, he will tell you, I'm not even having half of that amount of product or harvest from this particular piece of land because the climate because of the climate impacts. These are the climate impacts. How we interact with the environment, how we exploit the environment, and the consequences of that effect on our own existence, on our own production and productivity. So the pattern of rainfall will change as we are all seeing in the presentation. And even the snow as well in most part of the world. It will also change the animal migration and life cycle. If you look at the Gambia per se, the number of birds that are coming into our Bato Kungu today, today, and the number of birds that are coming before are completely different. Because, okay, you, you, will, you will understand that most birds will stay here sometime maybe six months in Bato Kungu. And, and I heard the Gambian people are following my presentation. There are most, most birds from Europe will travel from, from Europe during the winter season so that they can hatch, so they can hatch their eggs in the Gambia, nurse their, uh, nurse, their, nurse their chicks, and then migrate back to Europe in the summer. So you understand that this migration is now very much erratic. So now you will see certain bird species at a time when you are not even expecting bird migration. This is telling you that something is happening in somewhere. And as, a, and as a result, we are, and as a result, people, the, the erratic migration of most of these animal species are putting us into a, into a tight corner as to, as to what happened in East, because climate consequences in the East are the same climate consequences or similar climate effects in the West. Therefore, climate, climate change is a global issue. We must work together as global young people to solve climate problems. Because what happens in the West are the consequences in the East or somewhere else. Also, the rising sea level. We have seen most part of most part of the world. Um, I will take it locally in the Gambia. Uh, some ten years ago, in our capital city, the greater part of the land was taken away or was washed away by uh, by, by by the ozone. However, with the help from the Holland uh, Holland NGOs and uh, funders, we were able to mitigate that problem. But this is happening everywhere in the world. You go to Tokyo, it's a problem there. You go to New York, it's a problem there. You go to most of these coastal, uh, most of these coastal cities in the world, these are the problems that they are facing today. It is even disturbing. Uh, it is even disturbing the economy, the ports, because the ports are not functioning as they should function. Uh, the maintenance of the ports are also been getting escalated day by day as a result because of sea rising level. We have more drought and uh, the climate impact, we are having more drought and wildfires or uh, bushfire. You will understand that uh, in some part of the, uh, some part of the world, uh, they, they have what we call the, 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 light, the, light, uh, the light timber. Those kind of light timber, some species that are called Candelarium pendanum, pendanum Candelarium species, if the, if the, uh, if the uh, if, uh, if the temperature rises to a certain level, if the temperature rises to a certain degree, those plants might even burn by themselves because of the effect of climate, uh, uh, the effect of sun, sun, uh, sun radiation. And these are all caused by climate change. And this climate change are mad-made climate change. Climate change is a mad-made climate change. There is no climate change today. Oh, 90% of climate effects are all caused by human beings ourselves. So bushfire is becoming and insistent even in the Gambia. There are insistent bushfires in the world year in and year out. These are all climate, uh, climate impacts globally. And it is affecting our livelihood because if you look at development, economic growth and development, capitalists and most human beings are all yearning for economic growth so that we can have more money. However, is economic growth surrendering us? Is economic growth really solving our problems? Is economic growth really the problem of the world today? Most proponents will tell you, in fact, economic growth, economic growth has led us to get into this point that these challenges that we are facing today, since 1700, when industrial revolution started in Europe, when the burning of fossil fuels started in Europe, and it ripples from uh, most side of Western Europe, areas that are very closer to England, also started economic growth. And this also jumped into some part of Asia and today in Africa. 
So you understand that economic growth has not solved our problem for more than uh, for more than four or four decades. People, the economy is not rising. The global world turnout is been rising, but the global world uh, the global world health is going down. The global world education is going down. The global world livelihood is going down. So human being is in a dramatic collision with environment. You go into the you go into less snow and less ice. Look, the, the effect of climate change and demand, the, uh, the, the exploitation of natural resources by human beings is causing less, uh, it's also reducing the ice cover in most part of the world, in most part, uh, in most of the, uh, most of the uh, mountains in the world across. Because if, if, if you cut down more trees and we are not replacing them, if we harvest most, part, most of these animals that are also doing justice to the environment, you will really realize that the 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 the, 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 the sun radiation will be more will be heater than before. You will understand that the the temperature will rise, the over the over harvesting of the natural resources, and also um, the over intrusion into the uh, into our own environment is also raising the temperature day 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 by day. This rise in temperature. Is, cause, is, is what we call global warming. And this rise is hardly noticed by most people, as the proponents problem, have alluded. This, is, this rise in temp temperature is in a very slow motion to an extent that people think that, that in fact, things are normal. In, in fact, business as usual is not a problem. When business as usual is the problem today we are facing. This is causing most part of the, uh, it, is, it, is, it is affected the Antarctic and the Arctic. And, if the Antarctic and the, uh, the ice in the Antarctic and the, uh, the Arctic melt, the sea rise will the sea level will, will rise. If the sea level rise, most part of the world, most coastal cities in the world today that are that as uh, that we are established as a result of uh, economic exploitation and economic development will all inundate. We can go to uh, the next slide. Also, changes in plant life cycle. Okay, so <coughs> getting into the start, uh, start last listing of climate impacts. You can see uh, the impacts of climate change on different aspects of our life, and also the rise in uh, the, 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 the arrangement, the, the, the arrangement and the level of rising. Sorry. Uh, the, the, um, the, flow, the flow diagram, that we are seeing right now have given us uh, a more detail into how the effect of climate change and the climate impacts can, uh, can of course, affect our, our livelihood. Um, there are many kind of tree species, that, trees that were existing on our natural environment. Today, they went into extinction, or today, they are classified as endangered species. Some animals as well also are classified as extinction, uh, as extinction already. Some animals are also endangered as a result of human and climate impacts. So this is, a, this is a flow diagram that will show you that if the, if the GDP rise to this level, the climate, the, the, um, uh, glo uh, globally, the temperature will rise this level, and this is, it will affect the growth of our environment. It will affect the growth of our food so it will affect livelihood and as well our health as human beings. So in general terms, this is affecting what we call human capital. If these consequences are not being combated, if we don't act into them now, if we don't invest into them judiciously, you will understand that most animals will go into extinction, most trees will go into extinction, the global world product, whether it goes up or down, it doesn't matter, it will affect our livelihood. It will affect our social interactions. And therefore, the human capital will go down if human capital go down seriously, human beings are going to be uh, uh, seriously affected. Our livelihood in our living in the world is going to be seriously affected, and uh, this will not go, this will not go down well with us. Therefore, there is a need for us as human beings to look into these possible problems, to look into how can we combat them, how can we ensure that economic growth. Is, uh, uh, economy is growing side by side with environmental product, uh, protection. Uh, we, we understand because of the over exploitation of the environment, 
Cape Town in South Africa is affected seriously from water, uh, uh, seriously from having clean water. Most part of the world today are seriously affected from food. Food has been shut in most part of the world. Gambia today hadn't been. It is not the good effort of the global uh, gl uh, global giants, economic giants. We also have it has its implication on our long-term development. We will be having serious shortages in terms of food production because our lands are barren. Our forest has been deteriorated by human uh, human uh, human being themselves. Therefore. There's a prediction that if we, if we don't revise this impact, if we don't come and sit down as, uh, as young people today um, in this platform and other platforms, discussing certain issues and start acting now, the tsunami will increase. The global temperature will rise. More animals will get into extinction. The, uh, the global food production will go down and the, uh, the temperature will also rise. And this are affecting each of the sector of the economy and, uh, and, and holistically human, existen uh, human existence in the world. So in a nutshell, there is a broader, uh, I, will, I, will, I will love to get this into one point, that there is going to be a broader perspective for us to work together, stop war and crime, more invest meaningfully into climate, uh, into climate change, making sure that we have a balanced ecosystem in the world to address our problem. If not, there will be more war. There will be more wars in the world. If you look at uh, if you look at uh, Zambia, the climate impacts in Zambia is even causing most of the use in terms of food production. To an extent that Zambian people have to sell their own food mountain to Chinese pro uh, Chinese pro uh, Chinese businessmen to harvest copper and uh, and other mineral resources, and this will in turn also this will in if rise to rebellion. It will give rise to many other human uh, human um, complica complications in terms of food, in terms of economy, in terms of environment, and etc. So we can move to the next slide. Am yeah, I going fast? We're getting, you, we're getting you very well. You're not fast. I guess it's uh, moving on well. Yeah, okay, it's fantastic. We can can I go to the next, next slide? Yeah. Okay, super. So if only climate change, climate change is affecting, uh, uh, holistically is affecting all sectors of human, uh, human existence in the world. Water resources, water supply, and water quality. If, uh, if we are not doing justice to our environment, we, you will see that farmers will use more and more uh, NPK, more fertilizer, and this fertilizer will reduce the quality of water, especially, and it will also depress, will also affect the marine life and the marine ecology. This is, a, uh, this, is, uh, this is also a potential climate problem and potential climate impact. If we are not in, if we are not addressing some of these problems to an extent that the consequences will that the sea level will rise, either there will be more rainfall or solar rain, so, uh, low rainfall or low rainfall pattern, and the temperature will also increase. So you will understand that most of the species will go into extinction. The biodiversity will be seriously affected. The agriculture and food security will go down if you don't invest to ensure that there are more, uh, uh, um, we, we, we make our, our crop, we, we, uh, we put into technology, we use technology to boost the level of our crop and cropping and modify our also, also modify the ecology and also have modified species. This there will be a problem. There is a need for uh, irrigation. And if you don't also invest in the climate change to a certain level that there will be sea rise or low rainfall, there will be an erratic rainfall, then there will be a problem, most cities will around it and there will be erosion seriously. So the cost of prevention will be invest, investment. People need, need to invest. Human health, which is the most important human capital. There will be more infectious diseases and human settle, uh, humans, most human settlements will be, uh, will be taken away by the rising sea level. So there is a need for us to invest into the climate, uh, to the environment, to address and to suppress some of these challenges in the future. So we can go to the, okay, before we go to the next slide, you understand that um, if, if the global, if the climate, if the environment is, so if the environment is not managed, protected from the surges of climate change, the ecosystem, we will have a reduced ecosystem services. But some of these animals and some of these trees are prov provisional, they are doing provisional uh, services for human beings. 
some of them are doing regulatory studies and species in the world are regulating the soil texture and showing that the nut fixing is getting good and the nitrogen is being fixed properly within the soil texture. The soil texture is also good for certain cropping and crops. So therefore, this step is very important to maintain to serve its utmost in terms of regulatory service and climate impacts. So we, we, need, to, we need to understand the, the lithosphere, the biosphere, uh, and the cryptosphere and all these fires that we have, the hydrosphere, that is the water that we have. Um, climate impacts are also doing this. If, if there's no more rainfall, if we are not having much rainfall, you will see that the, the water table will go down. In most part of the Gambia, this is affecting agriculture and in fact affecting the, um, uh, most, the availability of most of the important crops that we need especially the horticultural industry in this country. We realize that rural women don't have that potential capital to establish a, uh, a technological garden that they can have water, a drawn water from taps. So therefore they need to dig wells. And since we are not having much rainfall, now most of these uh, women are affected seriously in terms of having, uh, having a, a good water table in their, in their farms. So climate, these are potential climate impacts that, is, that will uh, avert, that will put uh, our life in the doom if we are not addressing them globally. Um, this is this is the the greenhouse uh, the greenhouse gases, especially um, uh, the CO2 uh, and and other uh, its associates or its family gases that is affecting the the atmosphere. Also, there will be there will be um, there will be pre the precipitation in, uh, will go into extremes. Um, there will be more storm. The sea level will rise, and the permafrost uh, the permafrost will bend. It will, this will affect the Arctic and the Antarctic. And if this happened, as I still as I alluded earlier in my, in my previous uh, present uh, slide, this uh, this will affect most of the coastal cities in the world. So, in uh, ecosystem conditions and supporting services, I said ecosystem. Uh, uh, if you look at the ecosystem, it, it is doing many many services that are potential support to our livelihood and existence in the world. So therefore, if we are not doing justice to the environment, these supporting services or these regulatory services or prisoner services will be seriously affected. And this will affect all scopes of life, species distribution. You will see certain species in certain, <coughs> certain environment, those are not the right environment. You will see animal intruding human environments. You see him because human being has, ex has over harvested the environment has over exploited the environment to an extent that animals will also intrude human environment. We, the, the forest will, the quality of water will go down, there will be more fluids, the soil will degradate, the quality of soil will not be there, as I said earlier, there will be water scarcity and there will be drought in most part of the world. This is, this is why today between Gambia and Senegal, vast land of land, that lies between South Senegal, uh, that lies between Gambia and Senegal in the northern part of Gambia is getting barren day in and day out. That is uh, uh, northern side of Gambia towards Senegal. Okay, the southern side of Senegal is very good between Gambia and Senegal. We have a very rich environment, very rich forest. And I said it, if we are not protecting the environment, it can cause war and crime. Because there are many tree vendors in the Gambia that are intruding those forests in Gambia and Guinea-Bissau, getting forest products there, getting timber and logs, and shipping them to China and India and other parts of the world. This, as a result, have caused a lot of problems in the Gambia, between Gambia and Senegalese region that have been serving a comic in the Gambia. If you go to the internet, you will see most of these problems happening between Gambia and Gambian businessmen and Senegalese soldiers that are residing in the Gambia. Um, also, um, if you come to economic, the economic impacts, the infrastructure and physical capital, that the infrastructure will damage, the physical capital will go down. Um, most businessmen and capitalists could tell you, if you can have this amount of money to invest in certain environment to, uh, to get your return investment in five years, today probably to get those return environment because of the climate consequences, it might go beyond five years, either seven years or 10 years because the growth have gone down. The environment is seriously deteriorated it affects all cycles of li uh, livelihoods of human beings. So impacts on ecosystem and uh, ecosystem services. 
Okay, provisional service we said it earlier. This is, this is a detailed explanation. It will affect our food. We all know that the environment is providing us food. Good environment is giving us uh, fiber, wood, and fuel. So if environment is not being taken care of, if we are not giving the stewardship service to environment, therefore, we are going to face the, the, the bare consequences of climate, for, uh, climate change, and this will be devastating. Okay, regulatory service. That will be climate, the good environment, the good weather, the fluid, the diseases, and water purification. This might change if we are not doing justice to climate, if we are not supporting the climate, if we are not providing a stewardship service to the climate. Social impacts, our health will go down. There will be incessant health problems. Today in the world, there are incessant malaria everywhere. There are incessant diarrhea in most parts of the world because climate has been grossly, because the environment has been grossly affected by the activities of man in his pursuance to economic growth. You can go to the next slide, please. Models of climate change. So climate change is, uh, it has what we call uh, average condition, intensity, return period, duration, intensity, time of transition, duration, interannual mean and average, average condition, and state shift to new, uh, to new normals. The average condition. We need to, as, as climate, uh, climate um, towards, uh, uh, climate uh, activists, we need to understand the average condition. If there's a flood, if there's a forest fire, <coughs> if there's a disease, algorithm disease, what are the, what, what is the average condition? It's gonna affect, you know, uh, uh, it's gonna affect people. Um, intense, the intensity of the, uh, of the climate challenges, we need to know so that we, so that we, get a, we better have a holistic plan to combat this human deterioration uh, problems. We need to know the return period. Are these problems happening every year? Are these problems happening every, uh, every two years? If it happened today, if it is going to happen in the next decade. If it happened today, it will happen in the next two years or in the next century. People need to understand this so that we have a better roadmap to combat this, catast this human catastrophe. We also need to t have a duration. If it starts today, when it is going to end? If there is a flood, what is the intensity of the flood? It's going to be one meter. It's going to be 0 0.5 meter. We also know, should know the timing of the transition. How it change? Does it change rapidly or does it change slowly? People need to understand all this. You also need to know the interannual mean and max. If it happens this, if it is something that happens every year, this climate, it's, it change um, uh, various variable happens every year or every decade. What is the what is the difference? The minimum and the maximum in in such year and in so and so year. People need to understand this so that we have a better roadmap. We, 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 so that we have a good um, a, a good architecture of a plan to um to combat and address a problem uh, holistically. You also need to know at the average condition. At most, what are the what are the conditions that it uh, what are the conditions that happens when there is this variable climate change or when there is this kind of climate change. People have to understand this. We also need to know the state shift to new normal. People need to, people need to, people need to shift. But we will, not, we will never know this until you have a good architecture of a plan to, to combat this problem so that we know how do we shift from this situation or this state to this state we call it a new normal. Today, putting on a max is a new normal. If you our ancestors, uh, our ancestors, that in 10 years to come, in 2000, probably in, in 100 years ago, if we tell them there will be a, there will be a, there will be 100 years to come, people will put in mask, and it will it will become a new normal. It will become a normal thing to them. They will tell you that is not possible. But today we are seeing people putting on mask. We are seeing people um, people are not being that much socially interacting. You've been seeing that it's a new normal thing, because of uh, uh, because of a problem, because of a global uh, a pandemic. So therefore, climate change could also be a pandemic, because it will affect all sectors of economy. And if this happens, uh, all sectors of human livelihood. And if this happens, we need to shift. We have we need to be resilient. We need to be adaptive so that we can shift from 
and uh, from one state to another state that we say that we call a new normal. So we can go to the next slide, please. So changes and impact, uh, changes and impacts in context. <laughs> Climate change are, are cumulative effects, and all changes concerned must be viewed in context of cumulative effects. We need to put, put everything together to understand the effect of climate change. But if you tell, if you tell a business, if you tell um, uh, a, bis a capitalist that climate change is affecting uh, is affecting production of rice in the Gambia, when that capitalist is producing um, is, pro uh, is producing what we call is producing uh, fuel from Asia in Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, he might not believe in this. He might not believe in this. If you tell a, if you tell a mayor farmer that climate change is affecting the prices of fuel in Asia, this is why the prices of fuel will rise in the Gambia or Zambia or Morocco or Tanzania. Probably he might understand why. So we need to put all these problems together. Changing in evapotranspiration and uh, albedo, we need to understand changing in vegetation structure and tide. We need to understand increasing fire frequency and severity of fire increasing drought, increasing frequency of flus, landslides, and debris, you, and flow, we need to understand all this so that we, we better put it to a level, uh, we put to a context that even a layman will understand that climate change is real and we need to plan to combat the, uh, this global problem. However, if we don't put it that way, it will be difficult for one person, uh, for a layman to understand that climate change is affecting him indirectly because climate change is affecting everything, either directly, or indirectly. So it is it is very important to view it cumulatively by putting everything together and put it to someone so that he can take it and understand it. So we can uh, we can move to the next slide. We also need to understand the processes and feedback to climate impact, climate change impacts triggered by extreme climate events. So there are some extreme climate if, uh, impacts that will trigger climate climate change. If, if people over harvest water, if people over harvest water and they also over harvest uh, trees, this will have a devastating impact on, on, uh, on, uh, on, the, on the water table. It will also have a devastating impact on the food production, on health, on, uh, on, on, on the way we, we even extract mineral, minerals, uh, minerals from production sites. This will also affect plant growth and plant health. This will also affect the rate of photosynthesis or the, rest, the, 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 the amount of sunlight that plant will have. This will also, uh, it, it will also increase the plant and animal pathogens that we, that, we, uh, that we are all seeing today. It will also affect the mortality of plants. But we understand that plants need certain considerable sunlight. If a gallery forest, what we call a gallery forest, if a gallery forest, a forest that, we, that you can go in and you don't even see a sun, if a gallery forest has been devastating, devastatedly been put down to a level that you go there, you have a direct sunlight. This will have an impact on the. Uh, uh, this will have a direct impact on young plants that uh, that that need to that need to substitute the older forest. They will also affect the full production, as I also alluded earlier. So we can we can see that climate impacts will also trigger some climate climate changes to 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 what we call the climate extremes or the uh, extreme climate change. So these are important for us to put it together. There can be climate change, but there are some climate impacts that will uh, that will that will that will push us, push humanity to extreme climate impacts. When we get into extreme climate impact, this is a this is this is a problem that is very difficult to solve. So this is why there is a platform everywhere in the world, the United Nations platform, the African, uh, the AU platform, and the national platform, the national policies. So we can address some of this problem before we get into that situation on that level. We can move into the next slide. Effects that add up. For example, in terms of coastal threats from the sea, we all need to understand the effects of climate change to coastal cities. We also need to, to understand all work in the same direction, all work in the same direction and are addictive or synergic. One sea, sea, sea level rise storm surges, river flooding, high erosive waves, coastal erosion, coastal development. These are, these, all these things are interconnected. 
Today, the tourism sector, people are over exploiting uh, uh, the coastal cities to a level that uh, uh, over exploiting the coastal city, putting skyscraper buildings, putting restaurants everywhere, even 20 meter. You come to Gambia, some of the biggest I found in the Gambia, and even in Tanzania, Arusa. There are some hotels that are very close to the sea, and this is affecting the sea tide. This is affecting the coast. This is affecting the, the level of sea and affecting everything with regards to the level, uh, the rise and uh, the, uh, the tide, the low and, this, uh, and, the, uh, and the high tide. This will equally affect the environment. It will equally affect human existence. And it will also push us, bringing other problems to, uh, to, uh, to, to a level that we call the, uh, the extreme climate impact. Mm. So we, uh, we need to address this. You can move on to, uh, to the next slide. The cascading effects of climate change. We, we, must, we need to understand that climate change are linked, cumulative effects are linked together. More transpiration, more transpiration, less runoff. So the stream networks, we understand that when there's more transpiration, there'll be less runoff. And warmer, and uh, there'll be warmer, and there'll be more wind. Drier and soil vegetation will be higher. There'll be more fires, and there'll be more uh, sedimentation. We sediment. This, these are effects that need to be controlled. And these are effects that we today, globally, everyone, every climate activist is talking about, and every climate activist is lobbying their governments to put hand on deck to solve some of these global problems before they get out of our hands. Warmer water, more invasive, less winter. So we, 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 we try to understand the implication of human, human, uh, human exploitation and the consequences that it will have on our natural environment because of our possibilities our to, uh, to, uh, uh, to economic growth. Human being is overmarried to economic growth to, uh, to a level that it, com it compromises the environment. By compromising the environment, we are, compro we are getting ourselves to a collision point with climate change, which is moving in a slow. By the time we realize that there is a climate change, this is the time that there is a, dis there is a destruction that we cannot remedy. So climate change is real, it is happening today. So by the time we understand that there's a climate change, I will tell you that will be a time that everything is put into a, uh, uh, we are put into a, we are all put into a ransom and everything is ruined. So we, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot get there. So we need to work to mitigate. So we, go, we move into the next slide, please. Again, Warmer temperatures and drier soils. We see, we see in uh, in the Republic of uh, uh, Niger that they have a in the Republic of Niger where they the, the, the are seriously affected and Mali as well. They are seriously affected with uh, from drought and the warmer temperature to a, to a level that when there's a wind, when 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 a wind blows, it affects everywhere. Every, it affects all the livelihoods. People even hardly move without a turban because of uh, because of uh, effects of climate change. In fact, uh, environmentalists believe that all the days, all the deserts were 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 gallery forests. Most of the deserts we see today, most of them were gallery forests. But because of over exploitation, they gradually, they gradually develop a texture that resulted into uh, being being uh, being being a desert. So under the more erosion, there will be more wildfires. Um, if if people are not over exploiting the forest resources, that will be cool. That the winds will be, the wind will be cooled. The soil texture will be fine and will be friendly. The environment will be friendly. The river waves will be friendly, and there will be no erosion and sea level will not rise. And there will be higher food production and productivity, and there will be good health. Because this is not happening. Human being is over exploiting. Human being is in a great collision point with the environment. Now we have direct sun. There's a direct sunlight because the the the, the, C, the, the, the CFC gases, the CFC, and the GHG, the GHG gases, the gases that we are uh, emit, em, emitting day in and day out in the world globally because of global global economic exploitation. Today we are we, the, the, the the sun. We have a direct sunlight from the sun to the earth. This is affecting all sector of human existence in the world. Let's move to the next slide. 
Climate change impacts on its sectors. You know, climate change is impacts on agriculture might be different from impact on, uh, on economy, might be different from impacts on social and other sectors. So on agriculture, we understand that climate change will affect agriculture and it will reduce the growing of season in some part of the world. Um, some years ago, in the Gambia, we have been four years consecutive rainfall, uh, four years consecutive, uh, four consecutive months as uh, we call it rainy season or summer. Four, four months, four consecutive months as summer. But today we have a less consecutive month as summer on predictable erratic rainfall. So it will, it will give you either more rainy season or low rainy season. Increase of growing season in some part of the world or short rainy season in some part of the world. Even in the same country or in the same environment, some part of the environment or some uh, some part of the country might have higher rainfall, while some part of the country might have less rainfall. Now, high rainfall in 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 the Manya, in the Manyana re, Manya, uh, Manya region of Tanzania and Arusha region of Tanzania, then that's uh, then Darussalam and Tanga. There is a higher rainfall uh, rainfall in uh, in in Sudan Sahel part of the Gambia than the uh, the Eastern Sudan Sahel part of the Gambia. So we have some longer rainfall spell in some uh, longer dry spell between growing season, uncertainties and variation in rainfall pattern, flus and devastated farmlands, increase in weed and insect infestation, increase in rate of growth of paradise animals at higher temperature and humid humidity. Also climate stress reduces feed, um, water intake, grazing and hence rate of growth and productivity, you know. I think this is very clear. This is very clear, right? So, impact of climate change on natural uh, uh, water resources sector. High rate of evaporation and spiration causing water loss. You know, if you can, if you can be the uh, stomata of the uh, stomata of uh, of uh, of plants or crops, there will be more evaporation transpiration, and this will cause more loss, less production, less product productivity. If there is higher rate of evaporation transpiration, more most of the crops. Especially the food crop will lose more water, and their production will be very low. <coughs> this will even affect um, the, the, the forage. This will also re reduce the forage uh, sector of an, uh, uh, of animal uh, production. Destruction of aquatic habitat due to high rainfall among causing death of fishes. Um, low rainfall also causes dry up water bodies, which leads to death of aquatic animals. Strategy of hydropower as a result of drying of uh, as a drying of drying up of dams leading to energy crisis. The destruction of irrigation structures such as drains and canals as a result of rainfall. Shortage of water for irrigation as a result of rainfall. Reduction in, in biodiversity due to water scarcity causing uh, causing migration or death of animals. Um, in some part of the world, they are doing what they call uh, the swirl technology. The swirl technology is a water harvesting technology that enables farmers to harvest rainfall water to be used for other alternative cropping or alternative, alternative agricultural production, production. However, this technology might be seriously affected if the rainfall is low. So, therefore, we need to we need to product, uh, product, uh, have a study of water for irrigation as a result of low, low rainfall. You know, some part of the world will use rainfall for irrigation. They will store water and they will do it for irrigation. Then if there is no water, there will, if there is no more rainfall, there will be a problem for irrigation. In some part of the world, during rainfall, uh, this, uh, this salt water will turn to fresh water. And this fresh, fresh water will be used for ag ag agricultural production. So therefore, if there is less rainfall, and therefore the salty water will, 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 be, it will, there will be a problem, for the salt water to turn into a fresh water to support agriculture. Um, uh, my Jaranka man is here, uh, Mr. Dem. Mr. Dem will allude that, will attest that some part of the Gambia in, uh, in, uh, in Pakaliba and some part of Jara is uh, having the uh, Jara and even Kiang are having salt water. But during the rainy season, this salt water will be turned into a fresh water for agriculture production, especially rice production. So if there is low rainfall, this will kill most mangrove. The Rasafora, Resmosa, and some Rasafora species of uh, uh, mangrove species will be devastatingly affected. So we move to the next slide, please. 
Impact of climate change on the health sector. Speed of waterborne diseases. If there is less water, you will understand that the water temperature, the, low, the water, uh, the water level will go down. And if the water level go down, what will happen is that if there will be a water stress. If there's water stress, people will not only drink clean water, people will also find other alternative source of water for drinking water. And this alternative source might not be a clean water. Then it will be a water, waterborne disease. There will be increase in mosquito breeding leading to malaria. Because, because there is no fresh water, and there will be increased mosquito breeding, uh, mosquito breeding areas, and there will be uh, malaria. Malaria will float into most part of the world. Causes of heat wave as a risk of high temperature and, uh, and relative humidity. There will be relative humidity and there will be no much water in the uh, in atmosphere. This can also cause some human uh, health complications. Cause it might also cause poor air quality leading to air bone diseases. You understand that climate climate change, if there's a good environment, good water, good and uh, good air, good environment, good forest, then the air will be clean because they serve as sinks in climate activism, in climate change. We must understand that river, river serve as a sink. The pollution, the GHG uh, uh, gas that we are emitting, the plants and uh, plants are serving and animals, some even animals are also sink because they will take in this uh, CO2 that is been emitting by human, human, uh, human activities from industries, from technological sites. So this, this will cause a problem and this will serve as a sink. Now, if you cut down the trees and we also dry our, uh, our, our uh, over harvest our water, then where will, where, where will we find or where will we have a sinks? These are the sinks and they help a lot in, in the health sector. If the sinks are over harvested, animals, plants and water have been over harvested, exploited, then there will be a rise in diseases, there will be incessant malaria, incessant waterborne diseases, and other complications. We move to the next slide, please. So therefore, we need to balance what we call the triple P, the people, uh, the people, the planet, uh, the people, planet, I forgot the, uh, I will tell you the, 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 the third one. So these three P's, the, these three P's must go together. People must survive and live. The plants must survive and live, and the economy must also go good and leveled, so that there is what we call sustainability. Because if there is no sustainability, there will be over harvesting, over exploitation, and we will be in a collision point with our own self. So impacts on transport sector. The make use of transportation infrastructure through high temperature. This can happen. Most severe storm and high storm surges can affect <coughs> railways. It can affect even roads, coastal roads, railways, and airports are vulnerable to sea level rise. It could lead to delays as well as temporary and permanent closures. Warmer windows can alleviate the cost of clear, uh, clearing ice and snow on roads, especially in the northern hemisphere, where we have more, 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 uh, more, more, more glass ice. Let's move to the next slide, please. Impact of co on coastal sector. Sea level will rise, and if sea level rise, most coastal cities will inundate. Increase in salinity as a result of mixing of ozone and fresh water. Um, devastating climate condition can also devastate the sea, the interaction of salt water and fresh water. And this has a potential effect challenge on our, uh, on our livelihood. Water bodies may be affected, leading to danger of aquatic life. Example, fish fish. Um, we all understand that. Most fish uh, will nose and will uh, will nose and live by with their with their chicks in the in the mangroves. If the mangroves are exploited, exploited, most we will have we will have uh, we will have a, a, a lot of fish thrown out, and a lot of fish thrown out will affect our livelihood. Uh, it will also lead to the threat, for example, oil mining and infrastructure uh, on the. Uh, uh, and infrastructure, and all these will be on a threat, because if uh, if the coastal this, the coastal cities most when we say coastal cities, these are the cities that are by the oceans, and these coastal cities in most parts of the world are used as ports and entry ports. Most of these coastal cities are used as a connection of mining, 
as a connection of uh, as a connection center for different products from different parts of the world through railways and railway infrastructure. And these coastal cities are also used as a, are also used as a warehousing for most products that will be that we, as an interconnection point or interconnection point for most global products that will be transported to different parts of the world. So these coastal cities are very important for human survival, though we are overdoing them, but these coastal cities are very important for transportation, mining, and many other human uh, activities that will be, that will have positive impacts to our livelihood. We move into the next slide. So, <laughs> that's the flow diagram here, the climate poverty development nexus. Uh, we need to understand the climate change, uh, global climate change and how this global climate change can also slow production, can also slow growth, and can also slow impacts, and can also have some devastating, devastating uh, consequences in our livelihood in terms of economy, in terms of agriculture, in terms of uh, socially, uh, and other uh, aspects of our life. Uh, it has many implications. Uh, it can it can it can it, it can threat our security, food security. It can also threat our health health and ecosystem. It can even threat gender. You understand that in the Gambia and other part of the world, there are certain cash crops. Uh, there are certain crops that are uh, that are meant for men to produce, and there are certain crops that are meant for women to produce. Though we are not in gender uh, segment here, but however, we don't understand our own context. Uh, from from our own uh, backgrounds where we are, and if there is a shock in some of this part of our our production, uh, and if there is a gap, if there is a uh, is, if if the gap is widened in terms of this production, or if the uh, if the gap is shortened by in terms of this production, this can get uh, us to a level. Uh, this can get us to a food insecurity, and food insecurity will uh, will 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 end up bringing shocks in the long term. Or short term, and it can also bring uh, uh, disasters. It can also disturb our existence. It can also have other impact in terms of education, in terms of safety, in terms of energy, in terms of sanitation, and even uh, uh, growth and uh, employment. We understand that climate change is even affecting the rate of employment. It even decreasing the employment opportunity for 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 for, for young people. This is why globally, SDG we, we uh, SDG. Uh, uh, um, um, global politicians and, and discourse how they how they can come up addressing climate problems in terms of goals, in terms of short-term goals, and also putting uh, it a very important agenda in that global goals what we call decent job. How we move to the path pathways, links, and effect. <coughs> As we said, climate change is cumulative. When we don't put it together cumulatively. We might not put it to a level that we want to understand and we want to make people understand. Because understanding a climate change and its effect consequences and how we can how we have a pathway for our existence. There is there is a need for us to come together and reconcile. Reconcile our our, our, our thoughts, reconcile our abilities, reconcile our our, our our capitals and invest this capital uh, and invest this capital to uh, to a meaningful roadmap to a meaningful infrastructure of problem solving so that we can, we can decrease and mitigate the problem. For instance, drier soils, less vegetable cover. We, we, we've seen, we've seen in, in the Sahel region that they, are, they have less good environment. They have less productive soil for vegetation and for crop production and for uh, forestry and environmental uh, manage, uh, management. And this will in turn cause more erosion. This will in turn cause more sedimentation. This will in turn cause more problems. This is why uh, in, in, in most part of the landlocked countries in the world, with Africa, um, African region is not uh, exclusive in this problem. Uh, most land, landlocked part of the world are areas in the world that are having more of this problem. Drier soils, less vegetation cover, and more erosion. And they're also prone to more diseases, especially um, especially waterborne diseases and malaria, and in fact, these are also these these are also the area or zone in 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 uh, uh, in SSA um, in SSA. These are also the zone that are more affected with incessant war and crime. 
in citizen war and crime. So climate change is linked to security in terms of uh, politics, to security in terms of agriculture, to security in terms of uh, economy and, and, and our coexistence uh, uh, as a global uh, global people. So therefore, uh, since we since we finish the presentation, uh, this is the end of the slide. We have to understand that climate change have also taken us to a level that uh, if we if we uh, if we don't come together as global young people in this platform, because we all understand that the global uh, millennial development goals, goal seven or goal eight, that is, that is talking about global partnership. Global partnership is very important in achieving the the, the MDG, and when the politicians met also, they also thought it very much wise to put global partnership as a core, as a core and uh, a, a reconciling, a reconciling goal that will put all these goals uh, to uh, uh, that will enable us to achieve all these goals. So as young people, we need to work together. We need to spare our time. We need to we need to talk about it because if we if we don't talk about it, we will not understand it. If we don't talk about it. We might not also make other people understand it. So we need to talk about it, understand ourselves more clearly, and also make other people understand it so we can have a, a good roadmap uh, in, solve, in solving uh, a problem. So on that note, since uh, I don't want to go beyond the presentation, if there, is, if there is no need, if there is a need, we might go beyond the presentation. I will, I will thank uh, my host, and I will thank uh, all the participants that, uh, that spare their time to come into this platform and support me to deliver this presentation. Uh, I'm very much indebted to your support. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very much grateful. Thank you so much, everyone. OK, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Boyer. It was a wonderful presentation. Uh, the yeah. explanation was explicit. <laughs> I want to move right away to the question and answer session. I, I yeah. think we already have a chunk of questions in the chat section. Uh, so to begin with, if, if, if anyone doesn't have a compliment or maybe a, a remark, a comment, then we can move uh, quickly to the question and answer session. That said, uh, I would be very much happy if we can observe some level of decorum. If you have a question, simply raise up your hand. And if you want to ask a question, you can as well enable your camera to ask a question. So I'm going to begin uh, with the very first question that we have here, I think. The question is from uh, Diana Oben. Uh, before looking at questions that are going to come from people who are going to raise up their hands, uh, the very first question that uh, I don't know if Oben should be a woman or a man, but the question that is coming from Oben is about the, 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 the role that gender can play in combating climate change. So, uh, Mr. Dumoya, please uh, be very brief in your answers. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much. <clears throat> gender is very important. Because if we are men and women, men are half and women are half in our pursuance to get to 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 get economic or to arrive into getting economic development, and human development. So human development is putting together men and women, capacitate them, build their capacity to work hand in glove to achieve our their dreams or to achieve a dream. So therefore, if we are if we are if we are compromising. The capital, the human capital in women or men, and only concentrating on only one sector, therefore there will be a problem. So when we say tree planting, you should encourage both men and women. Probably contextually it could be different. In the Gambia, what are we doing if we say tree planting to combat climate change? We we sensitize both men and women. We sensitize both, but we empower what we call gender representation. We empower women because they are less empowered for far too long. So we empower them to understand. We empower them, give them the tools, give them the knowledge, give them the, 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 the stage, the platform for them to address and understand and address. We also sensitize men, sensitize men to understand why we're doing this for our own common good. So therefore, women, they play a part. Men, they play, they play a part. OK, men, women are more of men, women are rice growers. And we have to make make them understand that if we have less trees in the uh, less trees around the forest area, if the mangroves, if the mangrove, the rice of forest species is highly depleted, there will be a problem. If uh, if this species that we call uh, 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 the diaspora mesopotamia, the, the the West African ebony, 
there is a tree called West African ebony. This most of these trees are, are most of these trees are found around the around the around the uh, around the uh, around the rice fields. You have most of these trees are found around the rice fields, and we have the Kaya Senegalensis. Huh? Uh, these trees are very good for uncalling soil and mixing soil. The soil texture is very good, and also the raffia tree, the raffia species. If these species are highly depleted, and people are using these trees for furniture, people are use, using these trees for building and many other things, so we need to sensitize and empower women that Thank if you. these trees are compromised, your rice fields will be compromised. So now they will become climate activists. They not say no, the men are for the forest, we are for the rice. No, they will also come and join hand in glove the climate activists to ensure that trees and plants are protected for our, for our own common good. Yeah, thank you very much. So it means that uh, combating climate change is a collective responsibility, irrespective of the gender. Uh, the next question we have uh, is from uh, Ayun Blair. Uh, I don't know if I have to name the word, but uh, question, uh, if I can read it as it is, how can we advise the young academicians in choosing environmental space as the fundamental principle uh, of our lives for their future studies? <coughs> what's the best thing we can do to educate our people and our governments to put more resources in the protection of the natural environment just one minute uh, be very brief please yep um i tell people everywhere i tell people everywhere every time all governments in the world are senseless there is no government in the world that is sensible Governments are looking into a sort of, yes, governments are very important in every country and in every polity. However, if the powers of government are not controlled by civil society, government will just be a, like a wildfire, going wherever it can find an opportunity. So we need to address, we need to, as climate activists, we cannot wait government. We have to put government to act, to action. We have, to, we have to hold government on their toes, make sure they do what is right. But we can't wait governments because African governments are, are serving as a stewardship to most of these industries in the world. And those industries are in the West. Most of in, these industries are in the first world. They are responsible for exploiting Africa and the third world. They need resources. They need <coughs> primary resources. These resources are found mostly in Africa and poor Asian countries. And they are using our own government to get these resources. So we can't wait for government. Let's come together as young people, work collectively, and ensure that we hold our government to account. We tell them to do this and that. We all understand that today in the Gambia, three, four days ago, they took a second, uh, uh, they took a constitution, a new draft constitution that was been funded, that was funded to a tune of $2 million. They used $2 million to fund the drafting of this constitution. Unfortunately, with the doomed government, they scrapped this constitution to a dustbin. Okay, thank you. Well, Governments in the world are not in the direction. So we need to put them to action. We are the government, you and me. We are the government. Super. Thank you. It means that uh, we as uh, individuals, we have a huge role to play. We have to hold our government. Government will say, well, they will never do it. They will draw policy, they will never do it. They will tell people to act, they will never act. I see. We have another question from Oben. Uh, how can we target food waste and food loss as a greater cause of climate change uh, since uh, landfills of decayed food produce a considerable amount of methane, food? a dangerous greenhouse gas. I don't understand, but uh, maybe I think you have a grasp of the, of the question. Okay. Um, if it is about food production, what we need to understand is that if we compromise the environment, there will be a high food shortage. However, we must, we cannot exploit the environment, but we can benefit ourselves from the environment judiciously, sustainably, 
this is why sustainable development encompasses everything, especially if you go and read the Agile Sustainable Development that was been drawn by uh, Jeffrey D. Stacks. It encompasses everything. We cannot over harvest, but we need to have a plan. Just like in the forestry sector of the Gambia, we, draw, we, we, we have what we call management plan. We draw a five years or 10 years management plan. How many trees we are, how many tree species are we going to harvest from so and so forest source and so uh, environment? And all these forests are categorized. We have the state forest, we have the forest parks, we have the joint forest park management, we have the uh, community forest, we have the community controlled state forest, and other forest types, forest reserves. So the, the, there is, all these forest reserves have their own variable management. So this all have, all these have their own impacts or consequences on the production of food, because most of the forest areas are around our farmlands. That's one. Uh, number two, if I understand the GHG GHG gases, you know, if you look at the, the burning of fossil fuel, people need to come with um, technology. Like we can use the, we can, the whole Africa can use the, the Congo Basin to get electricity power. The whole Africa can use North Africa for solar energy, solar farms. If we can do that as an African, <coughs> but if the government are conscious, if the governments are serious, globally, not even only Africa, globally, even New York, Eastern New York towards Mexico or something like that, between Mexico and New York, that greater part of land can be used as a solar farm to land more part of New York and even Mexico. So we need to come into renewable energy. We need to explore into other forms of energy different from fossil fuel. Because if we rely on fossil fuel, we will emit more, uh, uh, we will em uh, emit more greenhouse gases, which are very much dangerous to, the to our health, dangerous to our economy, and dangerous to our survival on the, uh, on the planet. So this is my, this is my own individual tech in addressing the question. Uh, thank you very much. I think we have the last uh, uh, question from still Diana Oben. Uh, she says that our efforts towards achieving the seven sustainable development goals and uh, are proving futile with the outbreak <laughs> of the ongoing pandemic that is COVID-19. Preventive measures have increased the existence of uh, plastics on the earth surface through mass production with, uh, which are disposed poorly. Uh, and <coughs> by asking this question, how do we uh, correlate our efforts towards fighting climate change, uh, given finances in the different continents are used to fight the pandemic? Efforts, because uh, I, what I understand, maybe to simplify the question a little bit, what she's simply asking is the fact that more money is being pumped to the fight against COVID-19. So how do we correlate the fact that we also need financial resources, not only to fight COVID-19, which has become an existential problem, but also to fight climate change, which has come to stay? Um, yes. Today, COVID is a problem. COVID-19 is a problem, but it is over-exaggerated. As I alluded earlier, governments in the world are senseless. So COVID-19 is over-exaggerated. So the richer countries, the first world, are using Africans, are using the third world, um, are using the third world to channel and to beautify and also enrich their economic base. 400 years ago, or 700 years ago, down the clock, they were using power to enslave and to control, to control economy and everything. Today, they are using money to control the economy. They are using money to control everything. So I don't think we need to rely on external. But however, we as third world countries, we as global young people need to equip ourselves to equip ourselves to fight against global pandemics. That is very important, to act proactively. People must be proactive. But if you look at the poor countries, they were the countries that were late to close their borders during COVID-19, because they are poor. Because they are poor countries, they need freight, they need freight for every, uh, they need uh, duty, fees for every freight, 
So they cannot close their borders. So we need to uh, we need to boost our economic base so that we are so that we are not vulnerable to most of these problems that we will be facing in the world. We also need to be resilient. Globally, I think we need to be resilient. And COVID-19 today have also diverted most the mind of most people to focus on only COVID and forget about other problems. Uh, today, in my own country, we invested more than $400 million into COVID-19. But if you ask most people in the Gambia, they will tell you it's not sensible. Because still now, our health infrastructure is fragile as it was. So now, where is the sense of investing $400 million in COVID-19? When malaria is killing more than 1,000 people every year, or 2,000 people every year. When more than 100 people are dying every year from preventable maternal, maternal mortality is rising. Every year, more than 100 people will die from maternal from maternity. When more than uh, under five will die, 100 or 1,000 under five will die every year. Where is the sense of investing $400 million on only COVID-19? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we need to be put up. Yeah. I, I think uh, you've really uh, elaborated on all the points, and uh, we really appreciate that you honored our invitation to, to join other community partners to talk about the issue of climate change. Uh, we hope that uh, each and every one of us going home today should have a grasp of what the effects of climate change are on us as humans and on the environment. We should understand that uh, it is a collective responsibility uh, for us to fight climate change or for us to start living and using our environment in such a way that uh, we, we can't be able to adapt. Uh, that said, we should understand that this platform is global youth network platform for education and empowerment, which means that it is not only about a specific country, about a specific continent, but it's about the whole world. And we encourage each and every one of us be it from Asia, be it from Europe, be it from the US, be it from whichever part of the world, if they have a presentation, we can simply uh, contact the, 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 that is the leadership of this uh, platform in the background to, to, to do a presentation or to opt to do a presentation in our next session. We appreciate each and everyone who uh, gathered here today to listen to uh, the presentation of Mr. Dumboya. If you want to contact him for more information, you can actually contact him on our platform. That is through our WhatsApp uh, platform. And we hope that we go home today with enough information uh, to not only talk to other people, to not only enlighten other people, but to start coming up with very good and brilliant vocational training programs, maybe other initiatives to see that we have the issue of climate change. Uh, that said, uh, once again, thank you, Mr. Dumoya, for honoring our invitation. Thank you, so thank much. you everyone for participating. Uh, we're going to adjourn uh, this webinar to the next session, and we, we hope that you stay safe and stay blessed. Thank you very much, and have a blessed uh, night. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone.